Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. We are so happy to have you with us this morning. We are also happy to have all of our online viewers this morning. So can we say good morning to them? Good morning to all of you worshiping with us online this morning. We would love to hear where you're worshiping from, where you're joining us from. So leave a comment so we can go back and read those and interact with you later. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. We have just a couple of announcements to share with you this morning. The first is that if you weren't here last week, if you want to make an announcement or when we get to the time of joys and concerns and you want to share your joys or your prayer requests, um, please wait for a microphone to come to you so that you can speak into that so that our online viewers can hear what we have to say in the congregation as well. The second thing I want to tell you is that um, all of the bags, that the school kits that were back there have been taken and are in the process of being sewn. That is 
amazing because there were 75 back there. So yay, you guys. Thank you so much. So we're also moving on to the school kits and the dignity kits, and you'll see those out there. There are lists of what goes in each kit. So if you have time to stop by and pick up things that go in the kits, that's all back there. What else? We have, um, last week I told you about meetups. Um, I arranged some times and dates in the evenings and the mornings for us to get together in small groups with me so that I can get to know you better. Um, but I forgot to leave the clipboard out there last week, so it's out there now, and um, I would love to meet with you, so if you want a time, you can sign up after worship. I also want to tell you that um, Monday through Friday, you know that Congregate Meals is held here at the church, and they are in the need of people who can help deliver the meals in the town of Stewart. Uh, they have very few people right now that are able to do that, and, um, and it's kind of taxing on them, and so even some of the head cooks are having to go out and leave to go drive the meals to people. So if you have a car, and you have about 45 minutes of free time between 10.30 and 11.15, I know they would welcome you coming and taking the meals and delivering them to the homes in Stewart. When I talked to Tammy, she said it doesn't take more than 45 minutes, so... Um, if you're able to do that, if that's something you think you could help with, please come talk to me, and we'll get you in contact with the people that need your help. We also have a big day coming up on September 12th, uh, Sunday school kickoff, fall kickoff, lots of fun things, and we are going to, um, to celebrate all of that with a lunch after worship. So come and mark your calendars for that. We'll have a really fun Sunday on September 12th. Well, they're all fun but September 12th will be especially fun. Any other announcements that we need to share with each other? Okay, then we're going to move in to our um, Iowa, Iowa State. You guys want to talk? Do you want me to talk? What do you want me to do? Thank you. Oh, there she's going. Good morning, all you Iowa, Iowa State fans. We are going to do a little uh, rivalry here this morning. We have playing of our uh, fight songs, and we have some people that are going to represent Iowa, Iowa State this morning. So kick it off, whoever, whatever we're starting off with, Iowa or Iowa State? Okay. <laughs> Our Iowa State fans. <laughs> Keep going. Okay, so this we're Nathan. Do we look like Nathan? Okay, four of us are filling in for Nathan because he asked to be the like super duper Iowa State guy. So um, I didn't go to Iowa State, but he did, and lots of our aunts and uncles did. So yeah, go State. <laughs> um, what do we say? We say that red and gold is like. We're not going to say no to them, but look at how bright and fun you can be if you vote for Iowa State. Woo! <laughs> That's all I got. All right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks for filling in for Nate. Way to go. Go Cyclones! <laughs> Yay! Oh, we got some Iowa Hawkeye fans over here to the left. <laughs> Hit it. <laughs> there you go. Get the aisle. Tear 
cheer for Iowa. <laughs> We're gonna cheer until the fear, the final gun. Pop! Gonna fight, fight, fight for Iowa till the game is won. Okay, I kind of feel for you guys because I thought Nate was going to be here, you know? I came with a soundtrack. Okay, and this is applicable to both teams. The uh, scripture I was handed, Galatians 6, 9. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So, usually, and it's been a couple years now since I was at Kinnick, but at Kinnick, this is what you wear, okay, if you're on the right side. All right, let's hear the music. Bring the music up. Okay, so this is what I usually wear, and I didn't put this on until the last minute because obviously, you know, Sweat City, so... Show kind of what good citizens we Iowa Hawkeyes are. We believe in voting, okay? Never thought that would be a controversial subject, but yeah. If you're a Hawkeye, you vote, okay? Even, what is it, the Daughters of the American Revolution, or what is it? Legal women voters? You know, they're always saying, vote, vote, vote. So, this is what we vote for this morning. That's where you drop your vote. <laughs> Except this time, it's not a ballot. It's a check or legal tender or whatever you want to call it. Okay. So, but that's not all that the Hawkeyes are about. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. We Hawkeyes are tolerant people. We believe in the power of protest. Go ahead and protest all you want, because it's still going to come. Okay? So, another thing that Hawkeyes do is that they volunteer. All right? And so, when I was working, I'm retired, but when I was working, every year until the last couple years when we had COVID interrupt everything, we had a thing called Iowa Mission of Mercy. And it was where all the dental community in the state would pick a city to volunteer their dental services. It was great, okay? So that's another for Iowa. <laughs> I volunteer, I teach Sunday school! <laughs> <laughs> you need the microphone? I can share the microphone too. Okay? So. And the thing is, is that, and I will give Nate props on this, because if you want to see a vet, where does a vet come from? They come from Ames, okay? Iowa State. Now, Iowa State's known for their veterinary school. Great school. Now, if you want to go to the dentist, you go to a University of Iowa trained dentist, okay? <laughs> Medicine, you go to university hospitals, where are all the physicians trained? If you want to have an engineer design a bridge, where do you go? Iowa City, arts, entertainment, all that stuff. I'm gonna, kind of putting everything on the scale, you know? So, that's not all we're about. Just to show that we're very ecumenical, there were some voices at that Iowa Mission of Mercy that said, hey, that's not fair because some of us went undergrad in Ames. Okay, fine. Here we go. We had an iMom t-shirt, gave equal time to them. You know, hey, we can all live together. We can all live peaceably together. 
We can all shake hands. Nothing wrong with that, okay? But there's something, you know, that I need you to give some serious thought to. <laughs> okay. So, I want you to really seriously think about this, all right? What I was getting to uh, is that life is composed of choices. You have choices to make. You know, Hawkeyes, Cyclones, which way do you go? Cue this guy here next year. This is what you're going to hear in Iowa City. Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you for participating this morning in the Iowa, Iowa State. Thank you, ladies, for playing our songs for us. And go Cyclones. Go Hawkeyes. Don't forget Northern Iowa. Oh, yeah. We got some in there, too. All right. Back to you, Pastor Jenny. Thanks so much. Thank you all so much for that fun, um, fun rivalry, all in the good name, in case we have no idea what we're doing this morning, all in the good name of giving to either your Iowa State or your Iowa team for the sound and audio visual fund. Um, we're just having a lot of fun with this for the next couple weeks. Next week, you're all to wear your Iowa, Iowa State gear, yes? Um, I hear more fun things are planned, and then we will tell you who won on September 12th at the lunch. So you're not going to want to miss that uh, to see who gets the bragging rights for the sound and video. I can't, no. Just the money, okay? So um, thank you so much, you guys, for participating in all of that. Now, let's take a moment to center our hearts and minds for worship this morning. Take a deep breath. And relax your body as you allow these words from Psalm 45 to soak in. A marvelous word has stirred my heart as I mention my works to the king. My tongue is the pen of a skillful scribe. Grace has been poured out on your lips. Gracious God, allow the space around us to be so thin that the distinction between the earthly and the heavenly would not be felt. Empower us to focus and recognize the beauty all around us, especially here, especially now in this place. Allow us to feel your spirit move among us as we focus our hearts, our minds, and our worship solely on you. It is in Jesus' most holy name that we pray. Amen. If you're able, I invite you to stand and join me in the call to worship this morning. Lord, we would follow you. Forgive us when... Be the one to whom we turn, whose hand we hold. Lord, we would follow you. I invite you to remain standing as we sing hymn number 572, Pass It On.
Please be seated. Let us join together in the prayer of confession. God of wisdom, we confess our failure to follow you in your paths of right relationships with you and with others. We have gone astray. We feel lost. We have upheld our own interests first to the detriment of others. We have failed to be generous with the poor and abandoned our efforts to bring about justice. We feel the stains of our sins, God. Have mercy on us according to your steadfast love freely giving control to you, be the guiding hand in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, hear now. Those of you who stand in the gap for the world as representatives of God, we have been made clean by the cleansing touch of Jesus Christ. In him, the disparity between our word and deed is made right. In him, our unkindness in action and in word has been forgiven. Go now in the purity of the king to speak the gospel through actions of justice, mercy, grace, and love. Do we have children that want to come up this morning for a children's message? How are you guys this morning? Let's go up here. So how was the first week of school? Was it good? Everybody did good? That's awesome. I'm so glad. Okay, who has chores at home that they have to do? How many of you have chores? What are your chores that you have to do? What are your chores? Uh, Clean the house. Oh, my gosh. Which is very, 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 very boring. (laughs) Oh, that's so great. What other chores do we have? Clean the house. Clean the house. You want to hold that so your friends can talk into it? What chores do you guys have? I wash dishes. Wash dishes? Nice. Clean chicken coop. Gee, oh my goodness, that's a tough one. Feed my cat. Feed the cats. What else do we got? Do the laundry. Do the laundry. That'd be a good one. Feed my that. dog. Feed the dog. Unload the dishwasher. Oh. Unload the dishwasher. Oh my goodness. Pick up sticks. Pick up sticks? Those are all great chores. Do you like to do your chores? No. Oh, a little. It, de- it depends if it's if it's hard. No, if it's easy, then yes. Okay, easy chores we like, hard chores we don't. Do we all agree with that? Okay. Why do you have to do your chores? Why do you think you have to do your chores? So you can have playtime. So you can have playtime. That's a good one. What else do you think you have to do your chores? So the house is clean. So the house is clean, yes. And so we can have, so we can get to go to, get to go to fun things. Yes, do fun things. Those are all good reasons. Um, Here's what I want to tell you. In our scripture today, Jesus is going to have his disciples go out and kind of do some chores for him. They're going to go do some jobs for him. But they're much different jobs than what you do at your house, right? So he tells them that they're gonna, their chores are going to be to go tell people about Jesus, to go heal people, to pray for them, um, to share God's love with them. Those are going to be their chores that they have to do. And so the disciples go out, and they do a good job. And they come back, and guess what? Do you think they liked doing their chores? No. They actually did. They were so happy and so excited when they came back from doing their chores because they saw that they were able to do some of the same things that Jesus did. And they were able to share with people about Jesus and about God's love. 
So that's what we do when we come to church. We learn about, who do we learn about at church? God. God and Jesus and, and their love for us, right? Right. And so it's your job, your chore also, just like the disciples, to go back out and share that with other people. That's pretty cool. And it makes us happy when we do that. Maybe not like cleaning the whole house, right? right. But right. <laughs> but it makes us happy to go share God's love with people. Can you do that? I thought you could. Should we pray together? All right, you repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for Jesus, who helps us learn how to live your better way and share it with others, just like Jesus. Amen. Thank you, guys. Friends, let us pray together. Gracious God, open our hearts, our minds, our ears, our very souls this morning, that your word might fall upon our hearts and our minds without resistance, that it might soak into us and it might transform us, so that when we leave here today, we are not the same as we came but we are more like your son, Jesus Christ. It is in his most holy name that we pray. Amen. How many of you would consider yourself to be an extrovert? A couple extroverts. How many of you would consider yourself to be introverts? You don't want to raise your hand, introverts, right? (laughs) How many of you are like, I have no clue if I'm an introvert or an extrovert? (laughs) So the best analogy I ever heard about this before is, um, let's pretend that you were invited to a party, and the party is hosted by a very good friend of yours. It's going to be a lot of fun, and all of your friends are going to be at the party, and so you agree to go. The night of the party, your friend calls and has to cancel for whatever reason. All the extroverts are depressed that the party has been canceled. They may even call up some of the people they knew they were going to go and get together anyway. And all of the introverts are celebrating and rejoicing because the party was canceled and we didn't want to go anyway, right? Do you know which one you are now? (laughs) Probably. The reason I ask you is because the extroverts are going to hear today's scripture and they're going to be so excited. They might even run right out the front door and be like, I cannot wait to do this. And the introverts are going to be like, i got to find a new church because this is ridiculous. But it's just the scripture. This is our third week in the Awaken series. And we are being a little more intentional about seeing the people that God has put on our path. Truly seeing them and what needs that they might have. And we are praying for all of these people who come upon our path. We are praying for the entire community and the entire church and seeing what might arise out of that. And as we do this, as we're praying for those names, um, I am hoping that you are going to start seeing things happen in front of you. And you're going to call these things coincidences. For an example, somebody is on your prayer list that you took home and you've been praying for them and you have no idea who this person is. But you're going to talk with somebody you know, and their name is going to come up in conversation. Or you're going to have somebody on your prayer list, and you have no idea who they are, but you're going to be out in public, and they're going to introduce themselves to you. And in your mind, you're going to think, oh my gosh, what a coincidence. This person is on my prayer list, and I didn't know them. I don't believe in coincidences. I think that when these things happen, it's completely divine. And I am hoping that when these things come to life and you see them, you're going to come here and share them with us. So let me give you just a little example about something that's already happened. After the first week that the lists went out, someone came into my office and they said, 
Pastor, I need to talk to you about that prayer list you gave me. And I said, okay. And they said, the list that you gave me has one name on it. And I'm just going to tell you, it's, it's just the one person in all of the world that, like, really gets under my skin. And I said, okay. And they said, why did you give me that list? And I said, um, do you know how many names are on our master list that we are praying for? No, they didn't know. I said, 480. 480 names. And do you know how many packets we made? No, I don't know how many packets you made. 60 packets. And there are eight names in each packet. So I'm no math whiz, but the probability of you getting that one name on your prayer list that I randomly tossed out to you a couple Sundays ago is pretty divine, I think. I think there's a reason that name might be on your prayer list. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> they, they agreed, right? Any other stories like that that you just can't wait to share right now? Awesome. Here, let me get you a mic. I'm sorry, you have to. It's okay. Okay, so uh, I call a dear friend of mine is Charles Varley, back here. And uh, I was wondering and thinking about him and praying about him, and his granddaughter came into the vet clinic. I asked about him, and he's doing great. They, blah, blah, blah. Next week, he's sitting right here. That's all. That's awesome. <laughs> That's exactly, exactly awesome. So cool. Anybody else? You may not have them yet, but I guarantee as you keep praying through those list of names, you will see more and more things like this. And I hope that you will come and share them with us because it gives all of us um, lots of joy to hear what kinds of things God are, is doing in our lives. We have been in Luke 10 for a couple of weeks now. And today we're going to go a bit deeper into that directive that Jesus gave us last week to go. Last week we read that Jesus said the harvest is more than you can possibly imagine. There are more hearts ready to hear about Jesus than you can possibly imagine. And he gave us the directive that we are to pray and to go. And we talked about that last week, but I just wonder if some of you are like, but go where? Go how? How exactly does one go? And so today in Luke 10, Right after what we talked about last week, this is what Jesus says in verse 5. Whenever you enter a house, first say, may peace be on this house. If anyone there shares God's peace, then your peace will rest on that person. If not, your blessing will return to you. Remain in this house, eating and drinking whatever they set before you because workers deserve their pay. Do not move from house to house. Whenever you enter a city and its people welcome you, eat what they set before you. Heal the sick who are there and say to them, God's kingdom has come upon you. Whenever you enter a city and the people do not welcome you, you go out into the streets and say, as a complaint against you, we brush off the dust of your city that has collected on our feet. But know this, God's kingdom has come to you. So Jesus is telling his, his group of disciples, this large group of 72 that he has gathered, how exactly they are to go and approach the places they're about to go. He says, go into the town, find a house, and say, may peace be upon this house. If they share your peace, enter. If they don't, move along. And I don't think this is an exact blueprint for us, obviously. We're not going to go out into our fields. We're not going to go into the coffee shop or the Target, and we're not going to go up to complete strangers and say, may peace be upon you, right? Because then people would be very scared of us and run away, and we would probably get some strange looks. But I do think that Jesus is giving us some directions as to how we are going to go, and not only how we are going to go, but that we are going to go and look for lost people. 
And not only are we going to go and look for lost people, but we are going to do this very intentionally and very specifically. And this is where my fellow introverts are getting that feeling in their stomach before the party is not canceled. And they know that they're going to have to go. So hang with me. They are not going to go out. And the disciples, as Jesus sends them out, are not going out to find lost people on their way to some other big event. This is not some side thing that they are doing as they go on to something else more important. This going out and finding lost people is the event. It is the main thing they are doing. And because I don't think Jesus intended for the search and rescue team to stop there that day, I think it applies to us today as well. And you might think about this, that we often have good intentions of doing this. We will wake up in the morning and we will say, God, whoever you put on my path today, let me help them or show me somebody that needs help. Put somebody on my path today. And then we go about our day and we don't see anybody and nobody asks us for help. And we might think that we don't have that special thing. We might not have that, that magic, let's say that draws people to us, or, that, or we can't see the people who are needed. And I don't think that's true at all. What I, might, what I think might be true instead is that we're just oblivious to the people who do need our help around us, because we are hoping we'll see them. We are hoping they will jump out and grab us and say, hey, I'm the one. I'm the one that Jesus sent you to, to tell. I'm the one that needs help. Because we are on our way to something else. Looking for the lost people isn't the main thing we're out doing. It's a side thing that we kind of hope will happen when we're out doing something else. And what I think Jesus is showing us, and what make, might make a lot of us really uncomfortable, is that he's showing his disciples and showing us today how we should be setting aside some specific time to go look for lost people. And that we should do that with some great intention. And what that might look like is that before we walk in to that coffee shop or before we go into the store, before we go to school or before we take a walk around the block, we do pray, God, show me somebody that needs help and give me the strength to have the conversation. Give me the courage to have the conversation. And like Jesus said, it's a peaceful transition. So we're doing this as people of peace. And as you start that conversation, hi. If the person returns the peaceful conversation to you, that's an invitation for you to keep going. Maybe you're reading a book and you say, what are you reading? Maybe you're in the park and they have a dog. What a cute dog. What kind is that? It's a simple conversation. Jesus says if the hearts are receptive then they're going to be peaceful back to you. The people are going to respond in one of two ways. Peaceful, where the conversation keeps going, and eventually you're going to know why Jesus placed them on your path, or not peaceful. And I think we all know what that looks like, right? It's when we start a conversation and they're like, why why are they talking to me? (laughs) You know? Or you say, what kind of dog is that? And they're like, it's a dog. And they keep walking. Those are the people who you're like, okay, not peaceful, But they're just not ready for that yet. And the scripture says, shake it off. It's not a big deal. Shake it off and keep going. Let them know. Remind yourself, God still loves them. But shake it off and keep going. Some of you might hear this and think, this sounds awful. Some of you are very excited. Like, this sounds great. I want to do more of this. And some of you are taken way outside of your comfort zone by this. And you might think, this is just a story in the Bible. It's not like something we actually have to do. I don't have to do this, right? And you're right, you don't. But I do want to ask you, do you believe that the gospel is true? Do you believe that the gospel can change someone's life? Do you believe that Jesus died for you, that he wiped the slate clean for you, and that he loves you so much that he would die for you? 
And if you do, do you believe that someone else needs to know that too? Do you believe that somebody else needs to know that they don't need to live in shame their entire life? Do you, need, do you believe that someone else needs to know they don't have to be lonely? That they deserve just as much of any of us to be in community and to be loved? When the group of 72 people come back to Jesus, because he sends them out and then they come back, they are overjoyed. They're rejoicing. I imagine there are tears falling as they tell Jesus what they have seen, who they've healed, who has changed, who received them. And Jesus is ecstatic too. Everybody is overjoyed by what has taken place. And here's the deal. They're not rejoicing because of the messengers. They're rejoicing because of the message. The disciples did not come back, and Jesus did not rejoice because of the messengers, but because of the message. So friends, it's important for us to remember this isn't about us. If we feel inadequate to go out and do this, everybody's inadequate to do this. The 72 were inadequate to do this. Nobody's worthy. But Jesus makes it worth it. Jesus is the power. He placed the power in the 72, and he placed the same power within you today. The mission of letting people know that they are loved is not done with our power, but it's also not done by us hoping and wishing that they would know. It's not done by us hoping and wishing that we'll see them in the church someday. It's not done by hoping and wishing that more people will show up to do the work in the fields. It is done by going in the peace and the power of Jesus Christ. And that power is already within you. Let us pray together. Gracious God, whether the scripture this morning has made us uneasy or it has made us excited, remind us that it is you and only you who changes hearts and minds. Remind us that you are life-changing, God, that you are life-giving. But remind us also that we have a part to play in your mission. Give us the strength to go, to open our eyes to what is already around us, to keep us humble and vulnerable, to keep us in hospitality and peace with each other. And God, as we do, remind us to rejoice and to give you the glory. Keep reminding us when we leave here today that the work is never done. But the work is worth it. In Jesus' most holy name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, what kind of joys do we have to share with each other this morning? Anybody have a joy? Yesterday, yesterday was my brother's birthday. <gasps> yesterday was your brother's birthday? Oh my gosh, that is a joy. We have some birthdays like today, today too. It's Christine's birthday today. Uh, my mom is five years uh, breast cancer free, so. Yay! That's awesome. Praise God. He said his mom is five years breast cancer free today, in case you didn't hear that. Thank you. Any other joys? I'll just say I got to spend some time with our younger son, Trevor, and his family the other day. Wonderful. And the four-year-old called all the shots (laughs) about what to do. (laughs) That's awesome.
Are there people that we need to be praying for this morning? Uh, from what I hear in the news media, uh, the people of Louisiana really need our prayers. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're, they're about, uh, if you've been paying attention to the news, they say Hurricane Ida could be more powerful than Hurricane Katrina. Mm. And that was absolutely disastrous. They did take action to mitigate the problem since, but we still need to be concerned. Absolutely. Thank you, Chris. I think we have something else in the back. I think we need to keep in prayers all of our military and our military families. Um, everyone that has anybody in the military and is waiting at home, um, this, they're in, they're in high, in, high alert. And uh, there's some people that haven't heard from spouses for three weeks. And um, it hurts my heart to see that uh, not only our military, but innocent people and Christians, and it's a scary situation. Absolutely. Thank you. Anything else that we need to pray for this morning? If not, let us spend a moment praying silently, as then we will come together in prayer. Gracious God, we lift up to you all the joys and the many blessings that we have seen upon our lives. We thank you for the celebration of birthdays. We praise you for being able to celebrate years and days that have been cancer-free. We thank you for the gift of family, for being able to be together and the joy of children and grandchildren. All of the many blessings that may have gone unnoticed this week, God, we give you thanks and praise. Keep reminding us as we see these blessings in our lives to lift them up to you, to name them out loud, and to give you the glory. At the same time, we lift up this morning those who are heavy on our hearts. Those who are still grieving and mourning. Those who are not here for whatever reason. We pray for all of the people who need to know who you are. To know that they are loved. We pray for the people in Louisiana and who are in the path of the hurricane. May they feel your presence, your guidance, and your hand upon a very scary situation. We pray for those who have been ravaged by earthquakes and war. We pray for people in Haiti and Afghanistan. We pray for our military and their families, especially those who are waiting to hear from loved ones they have not yet heard from. We thank you for sacrifices made. 
We pray for their protection and their peace. God, that you might wrap your loving arms around those who are in waiting, who are scared and who are feeling the effects of war. God, we also thank you that we are able to lay these prayers at your feet, that you help us carry the burden. And that we can depend on you hearing our prayers and taking care of everything in your perfect time and in your perfect way. And we offer this prayer to you and the one that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, we are going to take some time to worship God through our tithes and offerings. If you need a little extra time to get your own offering ready, you can do that now. But also we're going to have a special, um, special treat this morning as Teresa sings for us. This was a prayer that uh, I found online. It's written to the tune of Away in a Manger. It's a prayer for Afghanistan, and it's beautiful. Um, the world words will be on the Facebook page later tonight in case you want to read them over and see them again. And again, I would like to say, as, as you've said, it is a prayer. It's not political. It's a prayer. <laughs> we pray for Afghanistan's people today, for those who stay for those who face terror by day and by night for those who can't sleep and whose dreams can't take flight we pray for the people who fear what's in store for dreamers and poets who grieve a closed door for those who are hiding so no one will see the people they are or who they hope to be we pray for girls facing a world they don't know who still long to read and to learn and to grow we pray We weep for the places 
is where war leads to war. We pray for your hand there to heal and restore. Bless all who seek justice and peace as your way. We pray for Afghanistan's people today. Thank you, Teresa. please join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. Loving God, with these gifts, bring healing and hope where illness and despair prevail. Transform these gifts and each of these givers that they may be your loving presence and your healing in the world. Amen. Let us sing together number 558 verses 1 through 3 of We Are the Church. the church. May you go out and search for lost souls this week. May you find them upon your path, and may you have the strength to speak love to them and into their lives. Amen? Amen. If you don't have a packet, there are still packets available also on the back table.
can't take those. Did Kim say something to you about it? Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Faye. Have a great Good week. Good to see you too, honey. Yes. No, you can have them. <laughs> say yes. <laughs>